In this lecture, we're gonna go over how taste and smell function. So the name for the sense of smell is called olfaction, and olfaction or olfactory receptors are in the roof of the nasal cavity, and they're neurons that have long cilia. Uh, in order for you to smell something, chemicals must be dissolved in mucus for detection. So anything that you smell has actually dissolved in a mucus membrane um, or a mucus layer that overlays the olfactory receptors, and then the olfactory receptors are able to detect those chemicals. And then impulses are transmitted via the olfactory nerve, and then interpretation of smells is made in the cortex in the brain. So this diagram has a lot to unpack. Um, the cribriform plate is the bony plate at the roof of your mouth, and that is where this sense is located. And then there's a structure called the olfactory bulb, and that has the nerve endings that collect scent information from um, the environment. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that through this plate travel some of these nerves, and then you can see that the um, nerve endings are down, they're called olfactory hairs, and they're down in this mucus layer. So when things are able to be smelled, those particles will end up dissolving in this mucus layer, and then they can be detected by the hairs of those olfactory cells. Now we can move on to taste. Taste buds um, house the receptor organs that you can use taste things with, and the locations of the taste buds are more than just on your tongue. Um, they're actually on your tongue, some on your soft palate, and some on your cheeks. So before we go into more detail about how taste buds work, here's kind of the um, anatomy of your tongue. So papillae are these little dot structures that are all over your tongue. And then you can see the back of your tongue. You've got the lingual tonsils, palatine tonsils. And then the epiglottis, if you recall, is the flap um, that helps you to not choke when you swallow things. It covers your airway to keep you um, from breathing in food and liquids. Some of the papillae that are in your tongue are the ones that house taste buds. So you've got these circumvallate papilla, and so the singular one is papilla, papillae is plural. And then on the sides of those structures are your taste buds. So here they're represented with this blue color. So your tongue is covered with those little papillae, but there's several types. So the filiform papillae are sharp and they have no taste buds. The fungiform papillae are rounded with taste buds, and the circumvallate papillae are large papillae with taste buds. And taste buds are found on all, or on the sides of the papillae, like we just saw in that diagram. Taste buds have a specific structure. They're called gustatory cells, um, and they have gustatory hairs, which are essentially just long microvilli. So those are projections from the cell body. And then hairs are stimulated by chemicals dissolved in saliva. So similar to the sense of smell, you have to dissolve the chemicals you taste in saliva or mucus before you can taste them. The impulses from your taste buds are carried to the gustatory complex in your brain by several cranial nerves because taste buds are found in different areas. So some of the taste bud information is sent via the facial nerve, some of the information is sent via the glossopharyngeal nerve, and some information travels via the vagus nerve. Your taste buds are able to detect several different types of flavors or sensations. So there's sweet receptors or sugar receptors. They can detect things like saccharin and some amino acids. Sour receptors respond to acids, so that'd be things like vinegar or lemon juice. Bitter receptors respond to alkaloids, so those are typically things that are basic and then salty receptors um, react to metal ions because when salt dissolves in water, it dissociates into a metal ion. To sum it all up, taste and smell are quite similar. They both use um, chemoreceptors, so the chemical receptors, in order for you to smell something or taste something. So they're stimulated by chemicals in a solution. Um, taste has four types of receptors, and smell can differentiate over a large range of chemicals. That's why you have a fairly sensitive sense of smell, though not as sensitive as something like a dog. Um, it relies a lot more on its sense of smell. Both senses complement each other and respond to many of the same stimuli. That's why if you have a cold, for example, and you've got you know, a runny nose, there's a lot more mucus in your nasal cavity, it's harder to smell things, which often also causes things to taste less strongly.